Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Jay Burness, and this is our seventh video now in our PCS series. Today I'd like to talk uh, about a less frequent but incapacitating condition we see uh, sometimes associated with concussion, and that's postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS. POTS is a type of orthostatic intolerance, which means it's an impaired reaction of the autonomic system in response to a change in position of the body. Now, if you haven't watched the last video yet, you may want to do that before you watch this one. It should make things easier to follow. So normally, our heart rate and our blood pressure tend to be the lowest when we're lying down at rest. When we sit up or stand, our hearts have to work a little bit harder to pump blood against gravity. So the heart rate and or the blood pressure need to increase slightly to accomplish this. It's the sympathetic system that increases the heart rate and constricts the blood vessels a bit to maintain that flow of blood to the brain. If you've ever gotten dizzy when you stood up too fast, you know what it feels like when it sometimes takes a few seconds longer than it should to get the blood flowing to the head. This is usually not a neurological problem. It's mostly caused by dehydration or deconditioning from a lack of exercise, but it does give you some idea of the type of symptoms that some people can get if the brain isn't getting the blood and the oxygen that it needs. In a normal healthy person, the activity of the parasympathetic system keeps the sympathetic in check, so the rate and pressure don't go too high. In POTS, we have a breakdown in this interaction between the two systems. This is sometimes called a dysautonomia. In patients with POTS, the heart rate rises too high when they're in an upright position. The heart beats so fast, it doesn't even have time to completely refill between beats. So the amount of blood it pumps out is not enough to meet the demands of the brain and the body. Now, patients can feel lightheaded, dizzy, headachy, and or nauseous. Some people even feel their hearts racing and can even have chest pain. In POTS, the standing heart rate stays at least 30 beats per minute higher than when lying down. The blood pressure may increase slightly or it can stay the same. But in order to be diagnosed with POTS, you must have both the elevated heart rate and disabling symptoms. If the heart rate's elevated, but there are no symptoms, then technically it's not POTS. So POTS is more common in women and is most common between the ages of 15 and 50. It often starts after a trauma of some kind or a pregnancy or surgery or even a viral illness. Of course, most of the cases that I see started with a concussion, but I've also seen it associated with dental procedures and even plastic surgery. So we learned in the last video that the autonomic nervous system controls our heart rate and blood pressure. The sympathetic system tends to increase them while the parasympathetic reduces them. It's the balance of activity between these two systems that determines our heart rate in any body position. So based on what we talked about in the last video, which system would you expect to be more active in the case of an increased heart rate we see in POTS? Well, of course, it's the sympathetic system. So what other things might we see in someone who's suffering with POTS? Well, they could have symptoms relating to any of the other effects of too much sympathetic activity. So things like cold hands and feet from vasoconstriction, light sensitivity due to pupil dilation, sound sensitivity, insomnia, anxiety, etc. Any of these things are possible. In post-concussion syndrome, there can be damage in the areas of the brain that would normally inhibit the sympathetic system. This can commonly be in the cortex, the pontomedullary brainstem where the parasympathetic centers are, or even in the cerebellum. Of course, potentially, any lesion affecting excitatory inputs to the parasympathetics or inhibitory inputs to the sympathetic systems could cause a sympathetic dominance like we see in POTS. In our office, treatment for this condition is aimed at driving plasticity in the injured areas. In POTS, we use a combination of tilt table positioning and brain stimulations to increase parasympathetic inhibition of the sympathetic activity. For most patients, this can restore their proper autonomic regulation when they're standing. So again, that's it for this one. POTS is a complicated condition, but I think it should have been easier for everyone to understand based on the stuff we've talked about in the other videos. In the next video, I'm gonna shift gears a little bit, and I'd like to get away from symptoms and talk about treatment in our office. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.